Hi everyone. I've been thinking about putting in a couple of these AC power meters for quite some time and I finally got around to doing it so let me tell you about it. I have a Chevy Bolt EV which is an all-electric car and in my garage I have two chargers that I can use for putting some juice back into the battery as I go along. I have a level 2 charger which is on a 240 volt circuit and that can add about 25 miles of range uh, per hour that it's plugged into that. And I also have a level 1 charger on a 120 volt circuit and that's basically a kind of trickle charge if you will that I might use uh, for all night charging on a cold winter night ju just to keep a little bit of warmth into the battery as it charges. Uh, other people in the uh, electric vehicle community have put in these electric uh, AC meters in order to see what kind of usage we're getting, how many watts and so on. And I thought, gee, it'd be a great idea to do that. The, the geek in me has decided that it would be good to collect some data. So I decided to go ahead and get what I needed to put a couple of these meters in, one on each of the two circuits that I used to charge the car. Let's take a moment and glance at the uh, meter screens here to see what kind of values are displayed. In the upper left hand corner you have volts, which in this case is 241 volts, and that's a direct read directly off of the circuit. So whatever the circuit is producing, that's what will be displayed here. In the upper right hand corner you have current in amps, and that's derived by attaching a CT coil around one leg of the circuit. And I'll have a little bit more on just what that, what that is. Now the uh, lower left hand corner has power in watts and that's basically the volts times the amps. So that's a calculated value. And as time goes on, the number of watt hours that are consumed uh, in the process of charging the car that'll be displayed in the energy value on the lower right hand side. So that's a number that accumulates over time and obviously if I reset it to zero at the beginning of the month and look at it at the end of the month I can get to see what the accumulated uh, consumption was for the month. Now before I go any further I'd like to call your attention to the note at the bottom of the screen. Do not attempt any of this if you're uncomfortable working around electricity. What's involved here isn't particularly difficult, but you do have to take some precautions to make sure you don't electrocute yourself in the process. The diagram you see here in the middle of your screen appears in the instruction sheet that comes with the meter. It's basically showing you how things are wired up and basically the result is you're going to have two pairs of leads that have to work their way back to the back of the meter where you'll find four screws to make the connections. Let's start off with the lower pair of connections which are for the voltage. As you can see you connect the two leads in parallel across your load so that you run those leads back, attach them to those lower two screws and that will not only power the meter but also display the voltage that's running through that circuit. The second pair of leads coming back to the back of the meter comes from this thing called a CT coil and if you look at the diagram you see that one leg of the load runs right through the coil. Now to give you an idea what that CT coil looks like I have a picture of one over in the lower right hand side of your screen and it's basically in this case a solid core and it has two leads coming out of it. And as you can see from the other diagram on the right hand side of your screen, one lead of the load goes through that coil and the coil somehow senses the amount of current that's going through that and sends a number over to the meter so that you can see how many amps the circuit is pushing through. Sorry about repeating myself here, but as I mentioned before, if you're uncomfortable working around electricity, don't attempt this particular project. It's not particularly complicated, but there are some precautions you need to take to keep from electrocuting yourself. Some comments about the uh, installation itself. 
The hardest part of the process for me was deciding where to mount the meter and running the leads from wherever I made the electrical connections to the location where the meters were. I saw some installations on YouTube where they simply put some double-sided tape on the back of the meter and stuck them to the wall or to the electrical box. And quite frankly, I thought that was a little bit unsafe and certainly uh, didn't look very well at all. So I chose to install the meters into some boxes. Uh, some uh, people installed the meters close to the outlets themselves. And I looked into doing that and I thought that would be good. However, I just plain old did not have enough room near the outlets themselves to do that. So I ended up installing the two meters and the boxes close to the electrical panel in my, in my home. Uh, one thing I did see, uh, somebody recommended buying a kit for installing these ferrules. And basically what that is, is the ends of your wire leads are stranded wire. And rather than just twist the wire and stick it into those screw attachments on the back of the meter, you put one of these ferrules on the end, which gives it kind of a nice firm grip and it gives it a something easier to put into those uh, connections. Some final thoughts about the installation process here. Uh, some of you may think that this was kind of unnecessary and sort of a waste of time, but I'm a technical kind of guy so that uh, I went ahead and did it so that I could gather some data. Uh, there's also a meter available that has uh, three lines, six numbers in total, and I'm glad I didn't go with that one there. I went with the two-line, four-number version of the meter because the numbers are just plain old bigger and it was easier for me to read. Uh, this was the first time I've used these plastic boxes. Uh, some people that I saw on YouTube were using metal boxes, and that's fine, but I found that these plastic boxes were a whole lot easier to work with as far as cutting the opening and so on. I wrestled initially with what gauge wire to use until I realized that basically we're using this meter as if it's a volt ohm meter. And I took a look at the leads that I have from my volt ohm meter and realized that 16 gauge and 18 gauge wire was going to be more than adequate for this particular installation. I'm glad that someone suggested using ferrules and I'm glad I bought a kit with an assortment of sizes because uh, I found some uses for it beyond this particular project. It's been handy for connecting up uh, speaker wires on the back of speakers and on the back of stereo systems and so on. Uh, the project also saw me using for the first time shrink tubing. I never seemed to have any of it around but before I got started on this I went ahead and bought a kit with an assortment of shrinks tubing sizes so no more black electrical tape to cover wire joints in this household. So that's all I've got and uh, let me know if you have any questions on uh, doing something similar on your particular system. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.